Hi, I'm Brett Jennings, and for the last 12 years, I've traveled the country to meet, mentor, and mastermind with some of the brightest and best minds both inside and outside of real estate. I've taken those ideas, brought them back to our team of experts, and sold hundreds of homes per year all across Silicon Valley, and this is how we do it. Brett Jennings here with Real Estate Experts, and I have the privilege today to uh, have it shared in another one of our uh, interviews with catching up with NECA Jenkins. NECA has, uh, and I have had the privilege of working together for oh, what, almost three years now, NECA, or three years? Yeah. Yeah. And she is an amazing example of what it is to really uh, embrace a growth mindset, um, adopt systems, and uh, what's possible when, when we do that. So NECA, what I'd like to do today, is, for those of you who don't know NECA, uh, let's let's hear just a little bit about you. Like how, how long, what's your background in history, how you got into real estate and um, how how long uh, you, you've been at the game? Yeah, um, going into my fifth year um, as a licensed real estate agent, uh, my gosh, going into my third year as a full-time, yeah, full-time agent. And uh, I, I think I, I got into it just getting really passionate about it for my husband and I and what we were doing with it for our family and helping other people, um, you know, with the, I, we, we had a corporate relocation kind of company that we, that we did while we were both still working full-time in tech. And uh, that started to grow and grow and grow. And slowly we, we kind of merged into real estate um, with the push of my husband and you, of course. And um, when I quit, uh, corporate America, I decided to go full time and it was scary, but it was probably the best decision I ever made. So I, that was fun. And it's been a journey since then. I remember that. I remember that. So, so basically, um, going on really four years as a full-time agent, we met three years ago, you were still working in a job, not ready to l let go of the, the steady paycheck. And that was one of the things I encouraged you to do. Cause I said, look, you, if you sold 10 homes, then you're ready to make the leap. And um, that first year, so let's talk about like that first year before we joined forces, uh, you had done 10 transactions, right? At Keller Williams, kind of on your own? Yes, six in my first half year um, of being an agent. And then in my first full year, 10 transactions. 10 transactions. So um, While what was going through your work. mind as, as you were entering the business at that time? Like wh what were you thinking about real estate and what was possible for you uh, with your, your income and things? Because you were a little hesitant about letting go of the steady paycheck because you weren't quite sure whether you would you would make it. So if you can look back then, what were you thinking about? Like, okay, is real estate something I really want to do? And how much money can I make here? And what was going through your mind? Um, great question. I think that was my abund or my scarcity mindset days. Um, mm -hmm. I really felt like when I even started with real estate, I just kind of stumbled into it. it. We were already kind of doing things in real estate. So it was fun for us. And um, I always saw it as an extra check, right? I, I was making good money in tech. I loved my tech family. I still love them. I, 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 um, I'm still very close with, with a lot of them. And but I always saw it as something extra. So I never, mm -hmm. ever thought of it as, you know, this can keep going. Um, there's always going to be someone needing a house. And that sounds so, it sounds so stupid to say, but I really never thought that. I thought every deal that I got was like, oh, what a blessing. And, you know, this is great. And it might never happen again. <laughs> so, so I think I was always stuck on the security aspect, right? That was a big thing that you helped me get over. So, yeah, um, I, yeah that I was, remember that. that. Was, I remember that first meeting, um, uh, you know, before we started working together and you, I met with you and your husband and I looked at the two of you and I said, you know, cause you were considering joining my team at the time. I said, well, you did 10 transactions. You have a husband who could be a business partner here. Why don't you guys just do your own team? <laughs> and, uh, and I, and I actually kind of pushed you away a little bit in that regard yeah, you did. <laughs> um, because I said, you know, you're, you, you already are successful on your own. You're going to be great. Um, but you persisted and, uh, but I, I did tell you, I said, look, NECA, if you, you and I are going to work together, you're going to have to quit your job. You have to give, give up, you know, you got to put both feet in, commit all the way. But I, what I knew about you, what I saw in you was that you had the potential to be um, phenomenally successful based on your personality and your work ethic. Uh, and let's talk about that first year with us working together. So you went from doing 10 deals at Keller Williams. Then the first year we worked together, you joined my team and you tripled your production in that first year. 
like what was what was what were you thinking about the business and um, your approach to it? Because you know, we, usually we will see agents double their production when they come over. If somebody's been doing eight deals, they'll do sixteen to twenty when they come to our group. But you you tripled that, and so obviously there were some things that you were thinking about that um, you know some either some things that you're like I have to make this happen, or these certain milestones need to be here for me to, 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 to really make this because you, you were letting go of the vine to trust this new career in real estate. What was going through yeah. your mind? Um, uh, that's a great question. I think I, I want to just touch on one thing in that meeting that you're talking about. I don't know if you remember, but my now three-year-old was in the car seat, right? Ne- or, right. We had her in the car seat right oh, yeah, next yeah. to us. And I remember walking out of that meeting feeling like I'm not quitting my job. Who does he think he is? <laughs> And so I didn't, it took what, two more meetings for you to convince me. So I I remember that exactly what I was wearing. I remember sitting there with my husband and my husband was looking at me like, you're stupid. You need to do this. (laughs) But um, I think I still had a scarcity mindset. Honestly, I think I still, once I made the leap, um, which was maybe a couple or two or three weeks later from that, when we met a few more times, once I finally made the leap, I still feel like Um, then I put even more pressure on myself, like, okay, I've got to, you know, continue to support the family. And if I'm going to match my tech income, this is what I have to do. So I think I was still driven by fear then, which I'm not, I don't think is a good thing. But for me, then in my journey, that was still what was pushing me along. But I also felt like I I was, I'm really passionate about this too. So I thought that passion is going to carry me through. I have nothing else to fall back on. So I have to make it. (laughs) Yeah. No, well, that, what's, well, you touch on something that's interesting there. I, I, I often say people don't get what they want, they get what they expect. People don't get what yeah. they want, they get what they have to have. And so um, I recall like my first year in real estate, I came from selling a business. I had a, I had a liquidity event, but then I got hit with an IRS audit because my business partner was a tax strategist, was doing some stuff that was on the gray area. And I lost all the money that uh, I had made in the sale of that company. And so I was like, it was make it happen mode. My wife was eight months pregnant and success was the only option. So that's an interesting takeaway that you, you were in that place where you felt like success was the only option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did. I really did. Um, that, that was all I saw. Yeah. And then, and then I remember you ramping and, and the other thing here um, that's a trademark of, of psychology of success is that you did still continue to want to grow. You got to 36 transactions and I remember you pushing and saying, hey, Brett, like, let's look at starting my own team. And part of that, that urge and that impetus with you um, and, and a couple of our other agents in the group actually led to the birth of real estate experts, right? This model yeah. where we were working in a team and then it's like, okay, let's, let's help you guys start your own teams. And um, let's talk about that next year in 2019. You went from 36 transactions kind of working in my team to then out on your own here at Real Estate Experts with the same support system and staff mm-hmm. behind you. Uh, a lot of the same lead generation that we were doing. And now on your own, you, you broke out and did 50 transactions uh, that, that next year. What was, um, what was that transition like for you to go from a team to being a solo agent? What kind of things were going through your mind and, and what do you think helped you continue that upward trajectory? Um, I think I got pregnant again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, I don't, I think slowly, I I really don't know when I forced myself to adopt this abundant life or abundant mentality, um, abundant mindset, I should say. But I think just slowly I started realizing, okay, all of these transactions, these families that I'm able to help are complete blessings. And I'm going to continue to receive those blessings. I think I was open to receiving more instead of constantly having that, you know, transaction and helping that family and being so happy and literally thinking that could be my last one. Wonder what I'm going to do next. Um, I started inviting it in and um, accepting it, if that makes sense. Like, like, yeah. like you said, expecting it, but also receiving it and enjoying it instead of literally thinking it's futile and I'm going to be, you know, broken on the street the next day. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's a great that's a great insight. And this, you, you touch on a concept. What we talk about, like when I'm coaching people, is some this concept called upper limiting, right? Where what happens is you start to experience a level of success that kind of really beyond what you thought was possible mm-hmm. when you first kind of started on the journey. And and then there's this sense that comes up in your mind, like, well, when's the other shoe going to drop? Like, when's yep. it going to fall apart? Like, yeah. and and it sounds for if you haven't experienced it, it sounds like 
really like I would love it if you know like 500,000 is coming to me and a million's coming to me but but it's interesting and that's what the opportunity is um, in an environment like we have here and that's one of the reasons why we're so em emphatic on the personal growth side of this business um, you know on, on the coaching you know we do use the, the tool of the future self um, really defining what what who you really want to become as this person who earns this money so that you can kind of live into that, right? But I do also remember, you know, maybe if you could touch on how important do you feel like the goal setting process has been for you on this journey? Because I recall, you know, every year sitting down with you and your husband and you're like, okay, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Tell us a little and me about fighting what... you, fighting you at every turn. <laughs> you, tell you telling me where I should be going and me saying, no, no, I'm good right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. Yeah. I think I do want to touch on something that you has stuck with me. So in the goal setting process, you're, you're, you know, obviously always pushing us to call our SOI call, um, maybe cold call or whatever the case is. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, push back on that idea. And you said a long time ago, probably said it a lot better than I'm about to say it, but you basically said, instead of thinking of it, like you're annoying these people or bugging these people, why don't you think of it as I have a value proposition. I, I have value that I, I want to share with you. And if you're in the space where you're ready to sell or buy or invest in something, I, I have the tools and I'm capable of helping you. And that really stuck with me because I think even without real estate in general with friends, family and all that, I'm, you know, I'm the type of person where I don't want to burden them, right? I don't want them to feel like I'm bothering them or, you know, putting my, putting anything of me on them. And so with real estate, when I'm calling or whether it's my SOI or, um, or, you know, people, referrals, I'm going into it realizing I have a value. I have, I have information that I'd love to share. I have a story of, sorry, there's something in the office. I have a story that I'd like to share with, with them about where we started and how we built wealth through real estate, uh, you know, the real estate that we lived in and how we, we compounded on that. And that is going to benefit them. And if it doesn't, that's okay. And, you know, instead of seeing it as rejection, realize that your blessings are for you and, you know, any, you know, person or family that maybe chooses to wait or chooses to work with someone else, that's their blessing. And, you know, letting that go and receiving all the things that are for me. Um, I think that was huge for me because I no longer feel like I'm inconveniencing someone by sharing with them my story or sharing with them what it is that I can offer them in way of my real estate services. Wow. There, there's so much to unpack in just what, what in what you just said, but in, in listening to you and, and knowing your your journey, um, kind of coming from the beginning in this place where you, there wasn't enough, right? And it was a little bit of a scarcity mindset. Um, getting into massive action, doing lots of transactions, um, and then with some coaching, your 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 mindset, your consciousness began to transform, right? You began to trust the flow that was happening, and then shifting what it sounds like from what you're saying is in the beginning when you were making these outbound efforts, whether it's prospecting or lead follow-up, feeling like you're interrupting people because you're quote, selling something, mm -hmm. but, but then arriving at this place, seeing and experiencing all the value and how you're changing lives with these families. Like literally, like we like to say, with, I say Silicon Valley is the garden of Eden of real estate, right? And that we have the opportunity to bless people with home ownership, change their financial trajectory of their, their own family and possibly a legacy you know, yeah. through real estate. And once you began to experience that personally, right, then you went from selling to, oh my God, I have this amazing gift, like of real estate to share with you. It sounds like. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's a huge uh, shift in, in simple shift in your mindset and your belief system that, that really took away um, and really freed you up to just do what you did. Because then we talk about the next year. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that moving into uh, twenty. 20 this past the year, of year. Corona. Corona. The, the year of Corona. <laughs> yeah, that was, it's been, it's been a crazy year, quite literally. And, uh, you know, in, in a good way and a bad, or in a bad way and a good way Yeah. Um, for you, you, you almost uh, doubled your production or you tripled your production the first year, uh, then went 58, 50 transactions as a solo agent, then 94 transactions last year, puts you in the top 1% probably one half of 1% of all agents um, in, in Santa Clara County and just remarkable growth. And you actually started in earnest, really putting a team together. Cause in that year that you did 50 units, 
um, you added one agent, right? And she was more of an assistant for you for the duration of that year? Yes. And since then, she and two other agents um, within 2020, um, Calvin and I have grown that into our team. And they're actually all three of them now operating as solo agents within our team and yeah. um, less of a support admin for us, which has been great to see them grow. So it's been it's been fun. Awesome. So you tell us a little bit about what NECA Jenkins group looks like today as far as like your team structure. Um, and a little bit about what was kind of going on in your, what are some of the challenges that you encountered um, in 2020 and how did you overcome them? Because I, I know that that was like in the beginning, right? You're a lot of team leaders, when they go to launch a team, they kind of grab the first person that's close to them, um, <laughs> that they know that's in their proximity, that they feel like has got a good personality. Hey, I get along good with this person, it'll be <laughs> awesome, right? Yeah. And that always, that isn't always the case. So tell us a little bit about the journey of kind of building NECA Jenkins Group in 2020. What does it look like today and, and what was it like getting there? Yeah, so today it looks like my husband officially quit, I think it's a year and a half now, his corporate job. So he runs the company with me um, and, oops, sorry about that. He runs the company with me and uh, we've, we've had our own personal assistant for a little over two years. Um, maybe just around two years. And then we actually just brought on a, um, another assistant who is more of our real estate assistant. Um, also a little bit of personal assistant, but they're both our executive assistants. And so they help us. One is in the office daily. The other one kind of works mostly remote and a lot of running around. And, um, and then we have um, our three buyers agents that are doing really, really well. Um, I'm very, very happy with uh, their growth. It's, it's cool to see. I see what you've seen for so long with the people you brought along. And now it's, it's cool to see um, them you know, grow as much as they have on my team. And um, Calvin, now that we have an au pair for our youngest six month old, um, Calvin now is officially full time and in the field you know, with in like production. I am. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Um, but so th that's, that's our team. So I guess five of us agents, my husband and I, and then three, um, three and then two uh, assistants. And then of course we have the support that, that is offered um, through, through real estate experts. Um, and we actually uh, about two months ago brought on an ISA, which has been great. Um, she's out of the Philippines and I love it. So that's been great for just some of the prospecting and follow-up that maybe we don't have time to do because I'm in meetings all the time or with clients. So that's been good really, really good um, for us to bring on. And I think uh, you and I and Lauren have been talking about possibly um, in a, in a dedicated showing assistant. So I think we're, we're uh, fine tuning some of the things that is, uh, that's gonna help us get to the next level. So it's fun. Awesome. So um, what, tell me about 20, 2020. So 2020, you, you started, of the 94 transactions you did, uh, 70 of them were your own transactions? Yeah, close to 70 um, committed contracts and, and helping uh, families re realize their, their um, wealth in real estate. So that was fun. And then the rest were um, our buyer's agents. So, cause Calvin just ramped on mid December to start. So it's been fun. Awesome. Yeah. So, so the bulk of the transactions in 2020 were done by you. Really, the team members that came on didn't really get into production until probably the third quarter of this year. Yeah, right? great question. So they've been part of the team, all three of them, um, one of them about a year, but the other two less than um, less than half of 2020. And so probably by Q3, end of Q3 and Q4, they really started to ramp up. So they started to ramp up. I think. And so, let, yeah. so let's let's talk about 2021. What do you think is possible? Now, um, you did 70 transactions personally, okay, in, in 2020. Now in 2021, we just were talking before we jumped on here, how many transactions um, have you guys put into escrow? We're only two weeks into the year. How many transactions have you guys put into escrow? As of yesterday, um, oh, I told you five before, but yeah. actually it's seven. So as of yesterday, five new contracts, but I just ratified two sellers. So seven new contracts. Seven new contracts. And yeah. of those, um, so of those, so two sellers and one buyer for yourself. Um, then, no, two buyers and two sellers for me. And then two transactions for Laura 
and Robin had one and Iden's probably about to get a couple in. So that makes Got up the seven. Yeah. So um, we're seven transactions. We're two weeks in uh, if, at, at that pace of, of sales. I think you're going to end up with at least 150 transactions. Um, what do you think is possible for 2021? What's the goal? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, September was a highlight. Um, I honestly don't remember what October, November, December were, but September was a highlight because it was our first really, really big month. We closed 19. Um, and just tracking actual closings, we closed 19 in September. I really feel like that will probably start to be more of the norm, um, that 15 to 20 per month that we'll close. So um, our, you know, each of the agents, their goals are, are pretty lofty and I know that they're gonna hit them. And it's, it's exciting to see because we're, what Calvin and I are trying to focus on and do is offer more support to them so that they can focus on doing what they do best, which is communicating directly with our clients to help them achieve their goals instead of getting bogged down. And that's what you've done really well with Rex, honestly, is to show how we need to focus on, on you know, instead of being jack of all trades, we need to focus on what we do best. And when we're bogged down with the paperwork, we can't give our best selves and offer five-star service to each client. So that's what I'm trying yeah. to do for them. So our, the new assistant that we just hired on is actually, as they hit their goals each month, we're offering additional services to them to help them get things set up scheduling so that the client experience is, is something that's smoother and um, more fun. Cause it's so stressful to be a first time buyer or even a third time buyer and all the changes that are happening because of Corona and the lending differences and all of that that for us to create such a smooth transaction for them, even before they're in escrow, that's something that is really important to me. So that, that's awesome. So it's, it, it's about doing more deals, but also doing it without compromising the level of service or support that you provide for your clients. I think that comes up for a lot of agents and they go, oh, you know, they look at, they maybe look at us from afar, like, oh, those guys do lots, lots of deals. And maybe that's like, they're, they're not that great with their clients. But mm -hmm. if you read our reviews, right, we have over 500 five-star reviews. You know, we have the highest consumer experience score uh, in, out of 100 teams across the country with Zillow. And um, we're doing that because of that focus that you're talking about. But um, so, so what's the goal then? Somewhere between 15 and 20 transactions a month? Are you, are you, yeah, you always otherwise? try to pin me down. I never like to say... You know, I'll be honest, it's going to be 150 plus, right? So when I think I 150 the, plus is more than doable. And yes. so, I mean, at 94 transactions, you hit 2 million in, in gross commission income this last year. So I think, uh, you know, you're going to be well above 3 million uh, and on your way to four. So it's super exciting to see um, in just this short 36 months, uh, this trajectory that, that you've, you've, you've experienced. And just to, to share with people, kind of just to give you a recap, of NECA's success, this is what it looks like. Um, she has gone taking a, taking a predictable process or path that we've created together at Real Estate Experts, gone from this 10 deals in 2017 to 36 in 2018, 50 in 2019, 20, 94 in 2020, over 2 million in, in commissions. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for um, just being willing to be coachable, to surrender your limiting beliefs, you know, every step of the way as we kind of try to push you up one, one more notch up the mountain. And uh, yeah, and, and just being a great ex example of what's possible for other people because you, you, whether you know it or not, you're inspiring others to succeed. Uh, so it's just awesome to, awesome to see. So um, yeah, any, any thoughts in closing, Neka, for, for new people who, you know, are wanting to go to the next level in their business? Um, you know, one or two things that they should be thinking about or focusing on. Uh, yes. they yeah, I think um, what I'm realizing is, you know, my trajectory, my growth and all of my challenges are a story that's going to benefit somebody else. And I really challenge someone out there that is feeling like they've got all these excuses or reasons why something can't happen, but they know they want something. I, I would love to talk to them because I think I'm, I'm barely out of that whole scarcity mindset, right? So it's really fun for me to show people all of my challenges and, you know, emotionally, mentally, and, you know, literally what I've gone through um, and whether they want what I'm, 
striving to achieve or something in between there. Um, I think the first battle is tackling your mindset. And so I, I, I'm really passionate about not only helping families really re realize their, their uh, you know, potential for wealth and real estate, but also agents, you know, that are interested in growing in this way. Um, I, I really would love to do that. So anyone out there that's listening to this and it resonates with them on where they are, where they were, where they want to go, um, I welcome you to reach out and I would love to chat with you. NECA Jenkins group is growing and she's an amazing leader and, and uh, she inspires you definitely reach out. What's a good way for people to get in touch? Um, go to my new website that's launching that has a link to everything. It's a uh, um, the Jenkins.co the Jenkins.co. Um, and then Instagram is always great too. It's at homes by NECA H O M E S B Y N N E K A. Awesome. Well, NECA, thanks for taking the time to um, kind of unpack your journey and the twists and turns and the ups and downs. I, I hope the content we shared here has been helpful and, and insightful for, for others. And if you are looking to grow your business uh, and go to the next level, um, specifically, if you want to double your business, Real Estate Experts is a place to do it. Feel free to uh, click on the links to either join one of our upcoming masterminds uh, or if you want a personal one-on-one -on -one session to unpack kind of the opportunities in your business, I'll sit down with you um, if you are committed to growing your business and, and let you know whether we work together or not, uh, where I could see your best opportunities might lie. So until we talk again, uh, it's Neka Jenkins and Brett Jennings saying, don't just be an agent, be the expert. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.